This program is brought to you in living color on NBC. The opening and some audio portions were pre-recorded. Tonight, live, the 46th Annual Academy Award Presentation. This is the Music Center in Los Angeles, California, where these crowds have been gathering since dawn today, and where the excitement has been building up to this climactic moment, the arrival of Hollywood's most glamorous stars for tonight's ceremony. There's Paul Newman with lovely wife Joanne Woodward. Vince Gardena nominated for Bang the Drum Slowly, Diana Ross. Composer Burt Bacharach and lovely wife Angie Dickinson. Nominee Paul McCartney and wife Linda. There's Jack Lemmon, best actor nominee for Save the Tiger. Rugged Charles Bronson with Jill Ireland. Talented Walter Matthau. The epitome of glamour, Raquel Welch. Venerable Groucho Marx, who will be honored on tonight's show. Burt Reynolds, one of tonight's hosts with Dinah Shore. Joel Gray, Oscar winner last year for Cabaret. The original trench coat, Peter Falk. Billy Friedkin, a nominee for The Exorcist. Marcel Marceau, perhaps the world's greatest mime. Ladies and gentlemen, Liza Minnelli. songs about my bill oh that's the one and ragtime cow patrol porter wrote a tune called tom dick or harry then there was oh johnny o that's the one and sam he made the pants too long and jim you remember that and clap hands here comes charlie and uh Oh, and Ben, the rat. But there's a name that no one, no one's ever used. No, no, no tombsmith yet has dared to try it. This era has me totally confused. But tonight, my friend, I intend to rectify. Hit it, Hank. That's the one. Oscar. Everybody loves your Oscar. Everybody wants your Oscar. With a lot of arms. Big boy, don't you love it? You're the plum performer's covet. You're the song. I'm a consummate prize, your glamour goes on, though you haven't any clothes on. Everybody wants to get you, grab you, hug you, hold you tight, and be the one to say, at last I got my way. And look who's going home with Oscar tonight. Everybody wants to get the celebrated statuette Feet, thorns, shivering knees And may I have the envelope, please And then that famous piece of biz And the winner is 13 and a half inches in height But every half inch is dynamite I want to get you, grab you, hug you, hold you tight And be the one And 
some years on 1971. The nominees for Best Performance by an Actress in a Starring Role are Genevieve Bougeot for Anne of a Thousand Days, Jane Fonda for They Shoot Horses, Don't They, Gene Simmons for Happy Ending, Liza Minnelli for The Sterile Cuckoo, and Maggie Smith for The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. Well, I really have to admit it. I've got a good feeling about it. I mean, actually, I know that the thing is just not to think about it, and I refuse to think about it. I will not, and I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, you know, first of all, I have this terrific manicure. She does divine work. And I went to her, and she told me that she'd never been wrong once, ever. And she said that she could actually see me just going right on up there, just copping the vase. So, I mean, I don't know where to put it in my house. I can set it up on the... And mantel. the winner I is... Have a mantel, but I can build Maggie it. Smith for the prime of Miss Jean Brody. <laughs> some years are awful, depressing as can be, and some years are 1973. The truly talented ladies nominated for Best Performance by an Actress are... Liza Minnelli in Cabaret. <laughs> Diana Ross in Lady Sings the Blues. Maggie Smith in Travels with My Aunt. Cicely Tyson in Sounder. Lee Ullman in The Immigrants. The real point is, what am I doing here? I mean, I am going to lose. I know, and so I said, well, I've got a dress, and it's yellow, and it's a gala. I mean, it's just, it's just so dumb. <laughs> I'm gonna show my picture and I'm gonna be standing there and have to smile. <laughs> Actually, I went to my man and she said, not you this year, big girl. So I know, that's it. And she's only been wrong once in 10 years. So, yeah. you, and and the winner talk. is Liza Minnelli for Cabaret. <laughs> Picture Arts and Sciences, and an Oscar-winning producer himself, Mr. Walter Mirisch. Thank you, Liza, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
It's traditional at these ceremonies for the President to welcome you on behalf of the Academy, and I do so tonight with great pleasure. I think it's also traditional for a President of the Academy to be asked repeatedly just what it is that the Academy does besides give awards. I like to answer this question by simply saying that like all academies, it seeks primarily to encourage excellence. Undoubtedly, the best known way in which it does this is by bestowing its world-renowned Oscar. But the Academy also encourages excellence in many other ways. It annually presents awards to five outstanding films made by cinema students. It supports an internship program which subsidizes young filmmakers while affording them the opportunity of observing outstanding directors. It maintains the best and most complete library of motion picture material in the world. It sponsors various screenings, retrospectives, and publications. It awards special grants and scholarships and conducts an artist-in-residence program in ver on various college campuses. And so, as you can see, the Academy is more than just Oscar night. It's a continuing effort to promote the spirit and influence of Oscar, the incentive for excellence in motion pictures throughout the ranks of all filmmakers. Tonight, we should like to pause for a moment and remember someone whose devotion to the pursuit of excellence in motion pictures is legendary. As a producer myself, I take particular pride in dedicating this evening's ceremonies to the memory of that pioneer and master producer of so many great films, such as Pride of the Yankees, Dead End, The Little Foxes, Guys and Dolls, and of course, Wuthering Heights. This evening is for a gentleman who truly gave of himself, and in so doing, gave us some of the best years of our lives, Samuel Goldwyn. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our first host of the evening, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Uh, thank you. I know the Oscars are important, but uh, I have something more important. I have a phone message here for Miss St. John from a Mr. Kissinger in Acapulco. <laughs> it says, uh, I'll be here for seven more days, so if you call, your name is Al. <laughs> I want to welcome you to the 46th Annual Academy Awards. It was a great shock to be picked as uh, one of the hosts for the Oscars. Not to me, but to the Academy. I look out there tonight, and I see a room packed with every star in Hollywood. And I can't help thinking, if this building should cave in, which I think it's doing, <laughs> if this building should cave in, the hottest star in Hollywood tomorrow would be Keith Purcell. <laughs> it's an exciting night in old Hollywood, and I can't uh, help but feel the tension here. Not yours, mine. I don't care about yours. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. I was thinking about coming over here. You got to recognize one thing. Right now in New York, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, all over the country, there are cocktail parties filled with people saying nasty, catty, snide remarks. <laughs> it's true, they're putting us down about the way we're dressed, how unfunny we are, how unsophisticated we are. And you know where that comes from. They haven't been nominated. <laughs> they haven't been invited, or they're just too chic to be here. So to all you people out there, from all of us here, <laughs> That's about as sophisticated and dignified as I'm going to get, folks. 
If you want sophistication, go to lunch with David Niven. <laughs> Is Charlton Heston here yet? <laughs> he is here. Why? Uh, some, <laughs> some great movies have been nominated this year, and one of the favorites is The Sting, starring that great twosome, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. <laughs> the greatest romantic team since Bogart and Bacall. <laughs> well, not quite as romantic, but prettier. <laughs> I, uh, I love the title of Sting. It reminds me of an old army training film. A lot of people have uh, accused me of being jealous of Robert Redford just because he has three gigantic pictures coming out and he's the hottest actor in town. But I ask you, Bob, up there on that mountaintop, so perfect. <laughs> I ask you, Bob, and I'm gonna speak slowly so you can understand me. <laughs> if you're so perfect, Bobby, why haven't you done Hollywood Squares? <laughs> Of course, Bob won't be here tonight, and uh, he's in pretty good company. George C. Scott won't be here. Marlon Brando won't be here. There are a lot of people who won't show up to get what's coming to them. <laughs> Speaking of Richard Nixon, we're gonna talk about the... <laughs> we're gonna talk about the voting procedures. And here to explain how everything is voted on and why I'm not up for anything again <laughs> is that incredibly, incredibly talented star of The Paper Chase, Mr. Timothy Bottoms. Thank you, Bert. Good evening. Okay, as in the past, this is the time in the show where the voting procedures are explained in great depth. <laughs> hopefully to the satisfaction of everyone. It's really very simple, and tonight I'm going to try and translate them once and for all. Okay. All eligible Academy members are asked to vote for nominations for Best Picture of the Year. The other nominations are made by the members of the various branches of the Academy, specialists in their fields. Costume designers nominate costume designers, film editors, film editors, directors nominate directors, writers, writers, and of course actors nominate other actors. If at this point they're not familiar with the potential nominations, they can view them at special screenings set up by the Academy. Finally, after the nominations are announced, all members have the opportunity to vote for all awards of merit, transmitting their secret ballots directly to the Academy's independent accountants, Price, Waterhouse, and Company, where they are tabulated in secrecy. When the day of truth arrives, Representatives of the firm deliver the final outcome in sealed envelopes to this theater where they are handed over to, their representative, to the presenters. In this same sealed envelope, everybody says, please, for. And this is the gentleman in final possession of them, uh, Mr. Robert Ford. <laughs> this is the 46th year these voting procedures have been explained. And I feel safe in saying that 46 years from now, you'll still be hearing them. I hope so. Thank you very much. I think uh, Timothy deserves a, another round of applause for having to read that. <laughs> the same people that had Timothy do that want him tomorrow to go on the Today Show and explain the economy. Uh, I know a lot of people are sitting here tonight a little uptight, maybe feeling a little uncomfortable. It wasn't easy getting here in carpools. <laughs> Before we get to the first award, they've asked me to talk to you about your thank you speeches. Uh, every year they do this, and they say, keep them short. Everybody makes them long. As a matter of fact, two years ago, there was a speech done by Cloris Leachman that is going to be released as a 90-minute special. Uh, 
So in case you're planning a real surprise for us, forget it, it's been done. We've dug into the archives, looked at over 40 years of Oscar shows, even back before television, and we've chosen these highlights. Acceptors who've, who have graced the stage with that certain poise and aplomb, never losing their dignity during the great emotional moment. I mean, when it comes to accepting an Oscar, you've got some pretty strong acts to follow. John Addison for Tom Jones. Oh, I, I'm, I am, I, they gave me the wrong envelope. Wait till the NAACP hears about this. Not only is the Oscar one of the worlds, or the motion picture worlds, what's going on? Both of us? Yes! Come on. <laughs> Let's read it. In unison. I know I how excited Miss Harris will be when, when she receives it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the world's greatest gate crasher, and I just came here to present Bob Hope with his 1938 trophy. See you, Bob. <laughs> Stan Berman. Who needs Price Waterhouse? <laughs> All we need is a doorman. Thank you very much. I wish I could take the lady home with me instead of this little Oscar. <laughs> I may have the baby right here. <laughs> I can't believe it. Don't let anybody tell you this isn't a terrific thrill. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how encouraging a thing like this is. All I can say is a very special thank you. Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, ain't that pretty? Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. The winner is George C. Scott. Thank you. I'm double Dutch, but my delight is such I feel as if we're losing wars with one for me And if I had a flag, I'd hang my flag out To rally for the final victory touch But since I left my flag at home, I simply have to say Thank you very, very, very much decided to reinstate something we haven't had for a few years, the Guardians of Oscar. So instead of uh, the statues being brought out each time by a couple of unknown gentlemen in rented tuxedos, we've got two very talented and attractive ladies to do it this year. It wasn't my idea, but I'm only a host and I'm not going to fight it. Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar's Guardians, the star of Coffee, Miss Pam Greer, and a young lady who starred in the motion picture, Judge Roy Bean, Miss Victoria Principal. Mm. Hello, Pam. Hi. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Bert. Ah, now for the reason we're all here. 
This year's awards. Would uh, you like to take it? I'll take this one. To present the first award for best short subject is a young man who last year brought his magnetic presence to a couple of outstanding dramatic portrayals. And a young lady whose motion picture debut has resulted in an Oscar nomination and has made her one of the most talked about short subjects of the year. Mr. Billy D. Williams. And Miss Linda Blair. get the opportunity to do it now. Uh, did you ever see yourself in uh, Exorcist? Well, I don't like standing in lines. <laughs> <laughs> now, you gotta be kidding. I guess the devil made me say it. Oh. <laughs> the nominees for the best achievement in animated short subjects are Frank Film, Frank Morris, producer. The Legend of John Henry, Nick Basusto, David Adams, producers. Policinella, Emmanuel Luzzatti, Giulio Giannini, producers. May we have the envelope, please? And the winner is... Frank Film, Frank Morris. Andy Warhol says that in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Right now, we'll settle for nine minutes called Frank Film. Tony Schwartz, Caroline Alfors, Yale School of Art, Harvard's Carpenter Center for the Visual Arts, and I thank you very much. In live short subjects, the nominees are... The Bolero, Alan Miller and William Furtick, producers. Clockmaker, Richard Geyer, producer. Live Times Nine, Penn Dencham and John Watson, producers. The envelope, please. Thank you. And the winner is? The Bolero, Alan Miller and William Furtick. A lot of people will be very happy about this kind of an award for good music. The National Endowment, Chloe Aaron. Uh, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, David Stewart, two fantastically imaginative people. And Zubin Mehta and the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a lot of fun making it. It was a lot of fun being here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>